And today I want to talk to you about how, and, and I'm going to try to make it as, as, as to the point as possible, uh, four things, four do's and don'ts on how to receive that power of the Holy Ghost, four do's and don'ts. Um, and then I want to pray for uh, some of you um, here today. Um, if you would turn to your Bibles to Acts chapter 20, I mean Acts chapter 2. It's the famous verse that we have read before. Uh, most people know it. We've learned uh, last week. And who, how many, if you have those signs in, with you uh, on your seat, let's see how many of you remember what we taught last week. Um, did the power of the Holy Ghost come on the day of Pentecost um, or in the upper room? How many say in the upper room? How many say on the day of Pentecost? How many don't know? Oh, wait a minute. I still see everybody out there. So you got to answer me. I can, I see you. All right, let's try this again. Did the power of the Holy Spirit come on, on, in the upper room or on the day of Pentecost? How many believe in the upper room? How many believe in the day of Pentecost? Okay. Let me refresh you. The Holy Spirit was given in the upper room. The Holy Spirit. But the power of the Holy Spirit was given on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's like you and me. He wants relationship. We learned literally that the Holy Spirit is what the Bible calls our earnest. It's like a wedding ring that God gives to us and says to us, I'm going to give you this until I come back again. And so there is a power and a person that is given to us. But I need you to understand something very clearly. There is a difference between the person and the power. Do you understand? The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, and he has power. Yes. Now, if you want to make an impact in this world, you want to have the Holy Spirit. But there are many Christians that can go to heaven without ever experiencing the infilling or the power of the Holy Ghost. And all their life, they've been taught that the Holy Spirit is gone. It doesn't happen anymore. But I'm here to say to you that in order for you to really wake up in your Christianity, to be alive, to feel the power, to know that you know that you know that you know that you are a believer in God, you've got to experience the power of the Holy Ghost. Not just the person. He doesn't want you just to eat half the cake. He wants you to eat the whole cake. Hello, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm getting hungry already. He, he, he ordained this in the Old Testament so that you might have it. It was a promise. In the Old Testament, it was the only promise that he says, I want to give you that has never happened before. In the Old Testament, they had power, but the power would come upon them and then would lift like a cloud. And then they had no more power. They couldn't do anything. But in the New Testament, he says, I'm going to give you something that won't ever lift. Ooh. That means when I walk in a hospital and the doctor says there's nothing they can do, I got something that ain't going nowhere. I have the power of the Holy Ghost to pray for the blind, the sick, and the lame. I've seen a man's leg grow out when I prayed. I've seen a person get up off their deathbed. I've got story after story of a normal man, a person like me, who, who, who God had to convince he was real. And tell me that there was a difference between salvation 
and receiving the power. And I need you to know today before you leave that there is something more, 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 more. Somebody say more. more. There's more. I mean, you got to feel it. I can't even move on. Just say, I, I, I feel there's more for me. They just say, there's more for me. There's Look at somebody and say, there's more for you. There's more. Don't, don't, don't just sit there. No, no. There's more for all of you. There's, there's something God wants to give to you. I want you to turn to Acts chapter 2, and we're going to begin with this verse. Four points, do's and don'ts, to receive the Holy Spirit. And when it, the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. Now, I need you to understand the context here. Jesus had told his disciples and those who followed him, I want you to, after my death, I want you to go to Jerusalem in the same place we had the Last Supper, and I want you to wait there, and I want you to pray there, and wait there until you are endued with power on high. This was a dividing moment in the history of humanity. They didn't know what was coming. They had no idea what was about to happen to them. All they heard was the instructions of the Lord. Can I say to you that the first thing you have to do, one of the things, uh, it's not my point, but one of the things I want you to focus on is that they were obedient. Write that down. They were obedient. Sometimes God will ask you to do something and it doesn't make sense to you. It won't make sense, but it makes sense to God. Several years ago, how many of you remember when a tornado hit? in uh, Lady Lake and tore everything up in Lady Lake. There was a tornado that hit and tore up everything in Lady Lake. And I woke up four o'clock in the morning and I said, God, I want to be of service. How can I help? And the Lord reminded me, call the members of your church. See if, if everybody's okay. Now, I was a member of another church at the time. But I called and started calling people, and, and one member said, you know, it's the craziest thing. The tornado came, got to my yard, lifted up off the ground, passed it, hit the ground, the house next to me, and kept going. I'm the only one with my property still intact. And, and they said, and you can use it as a relief center. I said, oh, my God. And so now all the, I called FEMA, and FEMA, everybody came to that property. But they, FEMA told me, Mr. Yates, uh, Minister Yates, we need a, a, a big, heavy moving machine that will scoop up the dirt and everything. Can you get it for us? Now, I don't work in construction. I didn't even know what kind of machine he was talking about. But by faith and obedience, I said, I got it. Now, some of you need to get that. Sometimes you may not have it, but if you know God is on your side, you just go ahead and claim it. I got it. I got it. I, if you need it, God's going to make a way. And then you step out by faith. Hello, somebody. That's where you use that faith and say, God, I'm not going to sit back and, and, and say, well, that's not my problem. I'm going to say, God, it's now become my problem. I've got to find somebody that has this big machine that will give it to me. Never asked anybody, don't know anybody, but I don't know what to do. God said, get in your car. I got in my car. He said, drive down this road. Drove down the street. He said, make a right. I made a right. I started driving out of town out 44. And I'm like, God, I, I, I'm feeling crazy because you ever, you ever think, I don't know if this is God. Man, this is, uh, your heart pumping. You know what I'm saying? God saying, speak to that person, speak. And you're like, no, this can't be God. This, this can't be God. I, I, and your heart going, boop, 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 boop. Yeah, yeah, that's God. Everybody say, that's God. If it comes to you more than twice, that, that's telling you it's God. And I'm going, oh, what's going on? And God said, turn right. I'm like, I'm turning right. Boy, I feel foolish. What if I get out here and get lost? What if I get out here and get a flat tire? It's, it's, it's like 6 o'clock in the morning. And I'm going down the road. He said, turn now. And I'm like, Arr! And I drove up into this dirt road like, like Dukes of Hazzard. Yeah! Whoa! And I pulled in, and there was a a, 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 a house, and and, and 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 there was just an open field, and I'm all alone. And then behind me comes this this Humvee, 
right behind me. And they pull up behind me and they say, and they got out of the car and they said, can we help you? I said, sir, I know this is going to sound crazy, but God told me to come here because we need a big machine to move trees and all this. And, and God told me to turn in here. He says, do you know where you are? I said, no, sir. He says, th- and, he, and, he, and, he, and he says, we don't have a sign up, but this is our company. And what we do, we cut and remove giant trees. We have big machines. He says, how many do you need? I said, all of them. He says, we're on our way. We went down the highway with these big old machines. And I'm sitting in my mind going, how did that happen? That's like a, that comes right out of a story, a book. That, that doesn't happen. It happens when you're obedient. It moved, thing. listen, talking about moving mountains, I needed mountains moved, but it took me to be obedient at the first step. May I ask you, what is God telling you? Yeah. What did God say to you today? We're talking about receiving the Holy Spirit. What is he speaking to your heart today? I don't know about you, but one of the things that happened when people come to our church is they say, when I walked in the building, I felt the presence of God. Has anybody felt that before? Anybody? That's your testimony. That's, that's what we have asked God for. But that presence is not just the tingle on the outside. He wants you to be completely rejuvenated. Oh, I feel the power right now on the inside. And some of you are so downtrodden, down depressed because you, what you're missing, you think it's some pill. You think it's some person you think no let me tell you what your spirit man is crying out for I need more God I need the Holy Ghost to come inside me and give me joy unspeakable come on somebody joy unspeakable that means it's so much joy you just wiggle in your get, get God almighty and you can't put words to the happiness you feel on the inside See, when I watch uh, my wife up here singing and she's talking about getting ready for revival, my heart was moving like, oh, suck it, suck it. We about to have a revival in here. And I felt the... (laughs) See, some of y'all are new to Frontier Church and and y'all don't know me that well. But (laughs) I like to move and talk and I like to laugh. But but, but I, I spent years traveling itinerant ministry watching the holy ghost wash over people for the first time in their life and i want it to happen for you if you've never had it you gotta want it do you hear me you gotta want it you gotta want it more than the pill than the marijuana than the bottle than how you look in the mirror, than him, than her, to your reputation and with your pride. You're going to see that in the text today. Look at this. It says, on the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place according to obedience. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared under them cloven tongues like as fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and being, uh, began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Let me say this to you. Tongues is the only gift that has in the New Testament that was not in the Old Testament. Tongues is the sign for the New Testament believers. Now, there are some churches that say, if you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. That's not true. No, 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 no. But if you understood what it did, you'd beg for it. You'd, you, you, you'd, you'd do whatever you could to get it. Because what it does, the Holy Spirit gives you tongues that is a language, a universal language that is above for all Christian believers. 
And it brings back and reverses what happened on the day of, of, of Babylon at when, when they were building that tower of Babel. God said, I'm reversing the curse. And instead of everyone having different languages, I'm giving you one universal language that can speak to me. And it will speak the truth and not a lie. Can you imagine all of us being able to pray in tongues at the same time? And God says, what did he tell the people in the Old Testament? If they are in unity, nothing. Nothing can be withheld from them. God, I need to be able to speak in my spiritual language. God, I need it. I can't live without it. Give it to me. Well, people say, well, I never had it before. Yes, you have it now. Turn to Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 16, please. Mark 16, and we're going to start at 18. Mark chapter 16. And I just got one question for you. Are you a believer? That's all I'm going to ask you. If you're a believer, just raise your hand. All right. All right. No, no, you got to commit to it now. Are you a believer? I need you to commit. All right. All right. Mark. Chapter 16. Can we get there? Mark 16. Starting at 18. Okay, go back to 17. Verse 17, let's all read together. This is Jesus speaking to the early church. Read. And these these signs shall follow them. Stop. Can I see who believes? Okay, so keep your hands in the air. I didn't say put them down. So this this is your aerobic workout for today. Okay, now, if these signs follow, now put your name in. Oh, no, y'all say it nice and proud. Uh, These signs shall follow. Good, do it again. These signs shall follow. Yes, them that believe and in my name. God, dog it. Listen, I don't have to do it on my own. I do it in his name. They shall what? Cat. Oh my God. When trouble comes your way, you can put your hands on. When trouble comes your way, you don't have to run to the preacher. Are you a believer? Are you a believer? Are you ready to be a believer? To receive it all. Your full inheritance of what God made you to be. You are bad. Shut your mouth. You've got power in you. Look at your name and say, there's power in you that I need. I need it. I can't let you rest no more. You can't be normal anymore. I need what you got. Man of God, pray for your wife. Woman of God, pray for your husband. Pray for your kids. If you got the power on the street, pray for the sick. Pray for the poor. Watch the believer come out. I need believers alive today. Woo. Listen to me. Some of y'all get mad because you're like, well, I've been all, all my life. I ain't never seen it. I ain't never seen it. Why are you here today? Because God brought you here so he could change your mind. Don't worry about the past. He's preaching to you. The Holy Ghost is in this place. I'm telling you, he's here. Oh, just you got to want it. You got to you see, see, everything comes by desire. Everything comes by. He says, seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto ask and you shall receive. Everything about God comes from desire. You've got a desire to have it all. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. Watch this. They shall speak with new tongues. These are the signs of the New Testament believer. I want you to ask yourself this question. Have you ever spoken in tongues? And if you have it, do you want to speak in tongues? Come on now. Come on now. We're, we, I, we're, listen, I'm here at the pulpit, but behind me is heaven's throne. He's taking notes. Come on, somebody. 
It ain't me. I, I, I can't take from his glory. I can't take from him. All I know is that he told me to stand and tell you what I'm saying to you. And that means he's watching this room. He is over this position in, the, in, in this state, over this city, and over this church. And he's looking. Do you want to speak in tongues? Are you ready for it? Are you ready for your revival? The Lord is asking. Do you want it? Do you really, really want it? Do you need it? Do you really? Re Come on, somebody. It's time. The world can't change until we get changed. Watch this. And, 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 and he says, and, 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 and they shall take up serpents. Now, that doesn't mean going to Kentucky and holding a serpent. See, it won't bite me. I can smoke. Ah, and they die. Don't be foolish. Okay, that's foolish. Everybody say foolishness. What he's talking about is when you are a witness to God and you're on the road in Jerusalem, there were serpents everywhere. And he's and Paul, we read about later, was making wood and a serpent came and bit him on his, a viper, a viper, not just a regular, you know, wasn't no garden snake. It was a viper. Bit him on the finger, and they thought, oh, he's a dead man. He shook it off. Come on, somebody. When you got the power of the Holy Ghost, you can shake off the, the battle, the bites from the enemy. You can just shake it off. When other people die from the same thing you went through, you shake it off because you got the power of the Holy Ghost. He survived through the trial to be able to go preach in, in Rome to the head dog because he had the Holy Ghost living on the inside. I'm speaking to somebody today that's been asking God for more. And watch this. They shall, and if they drink any deadly thing, uh, it shall not hurt them. It ain't mean you go drink poison. What it means is that all the water was used by both animals. It was used by, uh, for cleaning and for bathrooms. Yeah, you go drink the water. <laughs> no, no. What it says, if you're out there and you're on the gospel sake and you're walking with the Holy Ghost, you can drink that water and it's filtered. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. <laughs> How many want some filtered water? Come on, somebody. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. You can have it. And watch this. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You can have it. Look at your neighbor and say, you can have it. You can have it. You can really have it. Watch this. And the spirit, going back to Acts chapter 2, as the spirit gave them utterance. And here's the thing where we're going to have our four do's and don'ts. And we're going we're to start with our don'ts and we'll end up with our do's. Number one, look, look, well, look at number, we're going to go to verse five. And they're dwelling at Jerusalem. This is when they, the, the church had already been filled with the Holy Spirit. And there was dwelling at Jerusalem Jews. Everyone say devout men. Devout men. Out of every nation under heaven. Now I need you to think about that for a second. These were devout, Bible-believing Jewish people. Yeah. Devout. We're not talking about once every two weeks going to, to the synagogue. We're not talking about, you know, once a month. No, we're talking about people who were serious. They were devout out of every nation under heaven. Now, watch this. These devout men, when the tongues were noised about, the multitude came together. This multitude is the devout men. And they were confounded that every man heard them speak in his own language. Literally, tongues, there is a heavenly language. And then there are languages where you can speak in a full-blown another language, like German or Italian or, or Russian. There's a preacher that stood up in, in Russia and began to speak in tongues and spoke perfect dialect of Russia and was speaking to the church of what God was doing. He didn't even know what he was saying. Amen. We were in church one day, and I began to praise, and, and I went up in tongues, and one of our members was from, from uh, South America, and she began to tell me every word I spoke. She said, you spoken in perfect, English, perfect language, and you were giving glory to God in a language that you don't even know. The gift of tongues. It's a gift. Now watch this. Watch this. 
They were confounded because every man heard them speak in his own language, and they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? That's your problem. Number one, they didn't, they began, they had prejudices against the people who got the power. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. You can't have prejudices and say, well, you know, uh, that's just the holy rollers. That's what they do. Do you know why they roll? Come on. Make it plain. Can I, can I ask you something? Have you ever been in the face of God and dropped to the ground? Amen. You can't stand in God's presence. I promise you. Man, you can't stand in God's presence. You read, you read Daniel, fail. Ezekiel, fail. Isaiah, fail. Isaiah was like, oh my God, I'm an unclean man. You can't handle his presence. So when we lay hands on the sick, you see people fall. Oh, that's fake. Let me tell you something. When the presence of God comes, you better believe someone going down. People can't handle the power. It's not we push them. I've been in churches where people push people. Come on, in Jesus' name. And you, you, you're you going back and like, no, not going to do it. No, we're not talking about that kind of church. We're talking about put two light fingers on your head and blue, they go down. Why? Because the presence of God is there. And look what they say. And how do we hear every man in our own tongue when we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and the Judea and Cappadocia and in Pontus and Asia and uh, Phrygia and, and Pamphylia and Egypt and other parts of Libya and Cyrene and strangers in Rome and Jews and proselytes and Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak our tongue the wonderful works of God. They were hearing about God. And look at them. And they were all amazed and were in doubt. Saying to one another, what meaneth this? And others mocking said these men are full of wine. Two things you don't do. When the Holy Ghost is present, don't doubt. Amen. 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 Just because it amazes you yeah. and you've never seen it before, you could be a devout Christian all your life and still doubt God. You could be the most devout. Everybody said, oh, they're beautiful people. Oh, they're awesome. They give to the poor. They do all these things. But when it comes to the power, you doubt the power of God to fill you and give you the power. You need to repent of that and say, God, I'm not going to doubt you. If your word said it, I receive it. Say it with me. If your word said it, I receive it. Say it again. If your word said it, I receive it. You've got to be like those. You cannot be like these guys who were devout and they look good on the outside, but they were desperate on the inside. They were amazed at what they were seeing, but they were doubting. And then number two, don't do this. Don't mock what you see. Don't mock what you see. I, I had a friend of mine and uh, he, he was one of the most cynical believers uh, it's a disciple of mine. He's a, he's a great minister now. But we went to a revival with my godmother. My, now, my godmother, she crazy. Her name was Prophetess Canada. I don't know if anybody knows who she is. But Prophetess Canada would, would go into the hardest sides of town. And we were in a service, and I remember she was preaching, and one of the gang members came in and, and was throwing his signs up. And she was preaching and he got up because he was mad because he ain't like what she was saying. So he got up to walk out and she wasn't going to play that. No. So she goes, Jesus. And that man fell flat down on his face. He got up again. She said, uh, -uh Jesus. And then, and then she said, let him lay there for a minute. Let him lay there. He tried to get up. He says, now you're going to leave or you're going to sit down. He went back to the pew. Come on, somebody. Amen. Even an unbeliever, when they get power like that, 
So I brought my friend to the service. My friend was unbelieving of all the power of the Holy Ghost. And, and, and I walked up before service and I said, hey, Prophet Scanner, good to see you. Glad to have you. Glad that we were able to make it. And my friend came up. Hey, what's up? You know how people are when they have that wall up and, they, and, they, and you're praying for them. They wonder what you're going to do. Who do you talk to? How you know me? You don't know me. And you, you tried. Who told you about me? And he walked up and said, how you doing? She said, hmm. Hello. Grabbed his hand. Boom. Went out. Service had to begin. He was out while she was preaching. He was sitting there in the middle of the floor through the music, through it all. Oh, okay, now I, I just felt something. Some of y'all getting scared because <laughs> y'all like, God, don't do that to me. Okay, listen, <laughs> let, let me back up a second. God will never embarrass you. All right, he knows who you are and what you can handle and what you can take. All right. He ain't trying to make a fool of you. No, he did it because that hard headed brother I knew. And if that didn't happen to him, he, he would not have believed the power of the Holy Ghost. That's why that happened to him. And so about mid service, he woke up and he said, what happened to me? Steve, what happened? I said, bro, just sit down. Just, <laughs> just sit down. It's real. Number point number one, what you don't do is doubt God. If his word said it, believe it. What you don't do is mock God. Don't mock and say, oh, look at all these people. They're, they're just drunk. They're full of wine. That's what they were saying to the New Testament believers that just got filled with the Holy Ghost. They must be drinking. You ascribe a natural fault to a supernatural occurrence. Never take the glory from God. Right. Let me tell you what happened next. We're almost out of time. Peter, standing up with the 11, verse 14, lifted up his voice and he began to tell them, ye men of Judea and ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known to you. Hearken to my words, for these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is about the third hour of the day, about nine o'clock in the morning. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And he, begins to he began to tell a prophecy about how your sons and daughters shall prophesy, meaning it's not just for the men, it's for the men and the women. And he goes on to say that your old men shall dream dreams. Your, it will pour, I will pour out my spirit upon your handmaidens. I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy in those days. And there shall be signs in the earth. And I want you to go down and it shall come to pass, verse 21, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. When was the last time you called on the name of the Lord? To say, God, I need you. I mean, crying out with nobody else. I mean, where you make sure, and it doesn't matter, you get somewhere where nobody else can hear you. Yes. And you cry out to the name of the Lord. No more dry bones in here, guys. No more dry bones. Yes. No more of that. Because you know, y'all give me headaches when you have dry bones. You know, I get more counseling meetings because people are dry. That's the truth. Yes. Pastor, I got this problem, this problem, this problem. Okay, have you been touched with the Holy Ghost? No. Whoop, boom. They ain't got no more problems. Ah, God will do it. God will make a way out of no way. Hallelujah. Yeah, they were dry. They were just dry. And I want you to know you can't be dry. You got to let God in. Now, what should you do? And then we'll close. I want you to go down to verse 36, uh, 37. And this is the two points I want you to take away. This is what you ought to do. When they heard this sermon, they were pricked in their hearts. And said unto the rest of the apostles, men and brethren. These were the devout ones. What shall we do? You got to want it, guys. Then look what happens. Here's your two points that you have to do. 
Then Peter said unto them, repent. Everyone say it with me, repent. repent. What does repent mean? It means everything that you know is wrong, you ask God to forgive you. He doesn't want to fill a dirty glass. Y'all didn't hear me. He wants you to be pure. He wants to feel a clean glass. And the first step to that is acknowledging where you're wrong. Can you do that, church? Can you say, these are the things that I know I'm doing wrong, and, and nobody else may know it but you and God. Nobody may know that thing that you do, but you and God. And repentance is turning away from that thing and turning towards God. It is turning away from the thing you did and turning your face towards God and not looking back and saying, Lord, I repent. I should not have done that. I should not have made her do that. I should not have made him do that. I should not have been a partaker of that or this. God, forgive me. I want all of you. I don't want to play church. I don't want to come on Sunday to see what, who's got the best sermon. God, I want to be right on the inside. I want to repent. If I've been lusting all week, help me, God. Forgive me of my sins. If I've been greedy, help me, oh God. Forgive me. It's repentance. It's the real thing. And let me tell you something. Just because you say I'm sorry doesn't mean you're sorry. Apology is not repentance. Because God doesn't look on the outward appearance of a man. God looks at a man's heart. And you can say a sorrow a hundred times, but that, but, and you see God not even move. But that one time you finally got real with God. You say, Lord, really, I'm sorry. Then he moves just like that. So what you have to do is repent. And then secondly, watch this. And be baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. In other words, let me ask you this. How many of you um, think for yourself have been baptized? How many have been baptized? Okay. Were you baptized after you believed or when you were a child? Okay, so let me explain something. Baptism means nothing until after you have confessed Christ as your Lord and Savior. Churches will teach you, yeah, we're baptized babies. And no, no, you can't baptize a baby. A baby don't know what they're believing in. Baptism comes into play when you know that you've repented and you want to be your sins to be washed away. So you get baptized as a sign to all believers that I am a Christian. And let me ask, and let me say this to you. If you haven't been baptized, we baptize every, what is it, second, third, third weekend of every month and uh, put it down on your card and we'll get you baptized. Amen. Get it done because it is right in the sight of God and it leads to the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Wow. wow. So Two things. Don't doubt and don't mock what God can do. Two things we must do, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. And watch this. And ye, say it with me, shall receive the gift. Can you say that with me again? Ye shall receive the gift. I am not a person with power. We are a people of power. Come on. It ain't just a preacher. I just have a job. But I got the same gift that you have. You got to stir up the gift that is in you. Would you stand to your feet? I want to pray for you that you, I want to say this. We're going to be meeting over at Ski Beach right after this service just for a picnic and fellowship. But let's handle some things first. How many have never been filled with the Holy Ghost before? All right, if you haven't, I want you to come to the altar. 
if you want it. If you want it. Okay. Believe. 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 Only believe. Only believe. To be filled with the Spirit. If you, 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 you've done the first part as a Christian, it's time for the infilling of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to pray that this breaks loose among you. Kevin, stand behind the people as I pray. Um, Miss Sonia, you do the women, you help me with the men. Daughter, stand, if you will. I want you to know who you are. God says you don't have to bow down as if you're not worthy. He loves you. You know, freely give it to you. Okay? In the name of Jesus, from heaven on high, I lay hands on you to receive the Holy Spirit of God. Be filled with the power of God Almighty right now. That's it. Do it, God. It's real. Move. Move. Fill her from the top of her head down to the soles of her feet. In the name of Jesus. Do it, God. Don't leave an ounce, an ounce unfilled. Oh, get ready, daughter. Hear it. Hear it. God, dog it. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your Holy Ghost. I thank you for your power. Believe. Do not mock. Do not mock God. He's here. Man can't do this. Believe and receive. Come here, son. Woo. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for the power of the Holy Ghost to fall. This young man, would you lift your hands to the Lord and surrender all. Surrender all. All of it. Whew. Yes, Lord. There it is. There it is. God, thank you. Thank you for the outpour of the power. Thank you for your... Woo, Jesus. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Feel him, God, from the top of his head down to the soles of his feet. He surrenders. Believe, son. Believe. In the name of Jesus, he's here for you. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Come here, come here. God doesn't even need a whole hand to, to fill you with his Holy Ghost. God, in the name of Jesus, fill him, Lord. Show him who you are and what he's asking for. God, I thank you. Oh, yeah. oh Lord, I thank you. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you, Lord. Fill them up, 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 fill them up in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I release the power of the Holy Ghost in his life. Do it, God. God said, open your mouth and begin to praise him. Open your mouth and begin to praise him. Don't worry about your tongue. Don't worry about your tongue. It's going to feel heavy, but you just keep praising. Just say, Lord, I love you. Just talk to him like you normally do. Yes. See, it's already happening. God is trying to pull tongues out. Just, just talk to him like you normally would. God is going to do it. I want you to pray with him right now. Tell him, just help him to pray in the name of Jesus. Holly, the tongue, don't, it ain't over. Keep talking to God. Just talk to him. Watch what happens. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. There's nobody like you. God, I need you to feel her. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Do it. Do it. 
Let her know, God, that you're real. Let her know, God, that you can touch her. Let her know, Father, in the name, I anoint her in the in the name of Jesus and I command the Holy Ghost to fall upon her life in the name of Jesus release it all release it all release it all and watch God do it God in the name believe there we go there we go. come on somebody be praying for her pray for her and say God do it God do it God do it in the name of Jesus I loose it and let mm, it's your turn. You pray for her. Pray for her. Watch this. Father, in the name of Jesus, he, put your hands before God. I want you to lift them all the way up. Put your hands all the way up. All surrender. There we go. That's it. S surrender it all. God, I thank Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, move in his life. Move. Touch him in the name of Jesus. Do the thing nobody else can do. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I praise you and I worship you. I worship you, O oh Father. Let loose of your Holy Ghost and touch him from the top of his head down to the soles of his feet. Let him be filled with the Holy Ghost. I touch him in the name of Jesus. I touch his hands in the name of Jesus. I touch his mind in the name of Oh, God, I thank you for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let the oil, man, it's like oil just coming down on the top of you. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Loose on him and let the power flow in Jesus' name. God says he's opening up your ears right now. You're going to hear God tell you, talk to you right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, only believe come on only believe father i thank you touch your man touch this man in the name of jesus he needs you god he wants you god give him the gift of the holy ghost in the name of jesus Ooh. Ooh. when did you give your life to christ when did you give your life to christ so it was a long time ago when you did it, do you remember when you did it? How old were you? Okay. Okay, God said, son, it's got to be real. It can't just be because you're going into a problem. You got to receive him now. Talk to him. Tell him what you want. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Yes. Tell him. Yes, tell him. Yes, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. That's it. The blood of Jesus upon you you from all of your sins and I commit you to the Holy Ghost now father fill him in the name of Jesus let him have all of it God in the name of Jesus Christ let him be filled with your Holy Ghost and power speaking in tongues now I just want you to worship him just open your mouth and worship him just, that's it just worship him just worship him and, and just if your tongue is heavy, don't worry about it. Just keep on talking. Keep on talking. Hallelujah. Ooh, I can't let go of you yet. In the name of Jesus. Woo, God, I thank you. Woo, Jesus. God, I, I thank you, God, for your power. Woo, God. God, I thank you for what's happening in this man's life. Woo, God, I thank you. In the name of Jesus. Woo, that's it. That's it right there. Oh, man, it's done. It's done for you. Woo, woo. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, yes, Lord. That's all I want you to say. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Only you can do it, God. Glorify Jesus. Glorify Jesus. Let your power touch her. Let her know nobody but you. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, down from the bottom of her feet to the top of her head. God, leave no thing unturned. 
in the name of Jesus. Woo. God, I thank you. I release it, God, by your glory, by your spirit, by your anointing. Hallelujah, God. I release it. Yes, you're worthy. Yes, you're worthy. Yes, you're worthy. Hallelujah. Yeah, raise those hands as if you know you're worthy. You're his daughter. Raise those hands. You are worthy in the name of Jesus. God, give unto her the gift that belongs to her in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Come on, church. Praise him. We praise you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Ghost. That's it. That's it. Somebody believe. That's it. Someone believe. Woo! Someone believe. Oh, yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. Ooh, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Yes. Do it. Do it. Do it. God, I thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the change. Thank you for the power that's here. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you. Hallelujah. God, hallelujah. God, I praise you. God, I praise you. Hallelujah. Do you want it? Do you really, really want it? In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Pray. Hallelujah. I release the gift of the Holy Ghost upon his life that he might be filled with the power. God knows you. He knows. See, you you need an encounter because it's hard for you to believe without an encounter. God, give it to him. I anoint you now with the Holy Spirit and power. I lay my hands on you that you might be filled with his spirit. In the name of Jesus, believe, 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 only believe, only believe. Cry out to God, cry out to God, only believe. Release your pride, release your will. And I don't care who's there next to you, who's around you, I want you to cry out to God. Tell him what you want. Cry out to God. This is your time before the throne. This is you knowing it ain't got to be a man to touch you in order for the Holy Ghost to fill you. God, I thank you. Come on, daughter, praise him. Come on, praise him, praise him. In the name of Jesus, come on, you come get it. Come get it. God wants you to have it. Come after him. Come after him. Come after him. God wants you to be filled. Come get it. Come get it. It's written in heaven. It belongs to you. In the name of Jesus. God, I thank you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. It's time. It's time. Holy Ghost. It's time. Thank you. Thank you. Woo. Yeah, there, there's a wind coming. There's fire coming. Fire, Lord. Fire, fire. Fire. In the name. God, I thank you. Fire, fire in the name of Jesus. God, I release it right now, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. There's nobody like you. Woo! More, God, more, 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 God, more, more power, more fire. Woo! Jesus. Jesus, Rama Masatana Maka, Luna Mamma, Kerata Satana Makarada, Uraba Basurama Masatana. Oh God, I thank you. In the name of Jesus, I give it to you. I give it all to you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 God, I thank you. God, I praise you. I praise you. I thank you, God. Don't be ashamed of your father. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a great hand clap. Bring him forward. Come here, son. Did you want prayer? If you step just to the side for a second. Hallelujah. 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 Stretch your hands towards this man. It's time. It's time. Do you believe? Woo. Woo. 
There's a presence up here, guys. I can't do it, God. This man needs you. That's all he wants. He wants the real deal. I want you to put your mind on Jesus. How wonderful he is. How good he is to you. In the name of Jesus, I lay hands upon this man of God. In the name of Jesus. Minister, put your hands here. In the name of Jesus, I release the Holy Ghost upon you. Receive it. Receive the Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I feel, I want to tell you what it feels like. It feels like power or lightning coming down my arm. Hallelujah. Sometimes it feels like a tingling. Um, and that's how you know. It's a tingling like you've been plugged into an electrical socket, but, but you're not burned. It's, it's power. God, I thank you that you're releasing the power into this man. Let him be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let him have it in the name of Jesus. God, I seal it in the name. He's had the Holy Spirit, but give him the power of Pentecost. The power of Pentecost. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Give it to him. Give it to him in measure. Show him how you do things. In the name of Jesus. I want you to just tell him thank you right now. Just tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Do you want this Holy Spirit? Do you believe God can do it for you? Yes. Stretch your hands towards this young man. If you're a believer, if you're a believer, if you're a believer, thank you, daughters. Thank you so much. Your faith matters. Your faith matters. Your faith matters. Don't doubt. Don't mock. Don't be critical. Believe. In the name of Jesus. In the... Woo! You go pray for him in the pink. Hallelujah. I need you to pray for him standing here, the tall one. Okay? Hallelujah. You stand here. In the name of Jesus. Not just having Jesus in his life. To know him as his savior. But to have the infilling of the Holy Spirit. To fill him from the top of his head down to the soles of his feet. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Could you come here a second? Daughter, would you come here? Would you take his little one? I want you to lift both hands, son. We've got her. There you go. Now I want you to let everything go. Release it all. You're not done. Just listen to me. I want you to release it all. Release it all. Here we go. Release it all. God, we thank you. Come on, church. Believe. If you haven't had it and you were told it wasn't real, just trust me right now. No, 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 no. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. We want to make sure we do these things decently in order. Believe. Point your hand towards her and believe. In the name, oh, because it's coming. It's coming for you. In the name of Jesus. In the, ooh, God, I thank you. I thank you. In the name of Jesus, let the power of the Holy Ghost come out and overtake her. Overtake her. Release it all. Release it to him. There. Release it to him. You got to let it go. Let it go in the name of Jesus and be filled with the Spirit of God. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. God, I thank you. Yeah, there it is. That's yield. Yield to God. Be filled by God. From the inside out. He'll fix you from the inside out. Your, your joy is coming. Your, your happiness is coming. God is bringing it to you. Out of your belly. Ooh, you got, got, ooh, let me tell you what God just told me. You are a teacher of God's word. God Almighty, you have been set to teach the gospel. You have the call of ministry on you. It's gonna fire you up. You when you oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands this way, please, please. Woo! This is gonna be a world changer. God, do it. 
do it. It's in your blood. It's in your blood. Woo! Work on her, God. Work on her right now, right now. Holy Ghost, do it. Do it. I don't have to do anything. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. God, I thank you. In the name of Jesus. God, we're, we thank you. Now, now, listen, some of you may be wondering what's happening, what's going on online. Are we faking it? Nobody's faking it. This is the real deal. And I'm telling you, God wants to feel every person. Father, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Here it comes. Ooh-wee. There it is. Thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Spirit that is so present right now. Wow. Man, I really feel that power over your life. In the name of Jesus, surrender. God said, surrender your image. Surrender your image. Do not worry what people think or what people say. God says, surrender all to me and lift your hands like my queen, says God Almighty. You're mine. And if I call you a queen, I settle the matter. Now, in the name of Jesus, give her her gift, her inheritance. In the name of of Jesus. No games. No games. Fill her from the top of her head down to the soles of her feet for the glory of Jesus, for the glory of his righteousness, for the glory of his namesake. In Jesus' name, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And God, I thank you. In the name of Jesus. Now I want you to just worship him. Hallelujah. Let's give God a great hand clap of praise. Come on, let's, come on, come on, come on. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you. We give you glory. We give you glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I release it all. Hallelujah. Be filled. Hallelujah. Speak in tongues. I command your spirit to speak in tongues. Open your mouth and let it out. I command your spirit, man, to talk. Open your mouth and let it out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't shut it down. Let it flow. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Let's give God a great hand clap of praise. It ain't over yet. You need the Holy Ghost? Is that what you're trying to say? She need the Holy Ghost? (laughs) I'll pray for you if you want. I really will. If you want it. Come on. Come on, daughter. Come on. Hallelujah. It's okay, sweetheart. It's it's you and God. Come here. And he'll be a gentleman. He'll be a gentleman to you. It's okay. It's all right. Do not be afraid. He's a gentleman. Okay? He won't embarrass you. You don't want to fall. He's not going to make you fall. All right? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you, can, do you speak English? Of course. Of course. You believe in Jesus Christ? Okay. Would you want all that he has for you? Yes? All right. I'm just going to do something very simple. I'm just going to pray for you. And I'm going to tell you something. He's already touching you. 
He already is. Okay? So I'm not even going to lay my hands. I'm going to lay it close to you. Okay? All right? Just tell him thank you for what he's about to do for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, this is your daughter. This is your daughter. I want you to bless her. Bless her deep down. Yeah, that peace that surpasses all understanding. Let it overcome her. Let her be touched by the Holy Spirit. For you are her safety net. You are her great comforter. Fill her that she might know that you are real. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We worship you. And I want you to touch her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. And I want you to release all of it, okay? Let God have it all. He will keep you and he's safe. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Whew. It will be over you. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You're going to feel like a trembling and that trembling is going to be the Holy Spirit on you. Do you feel the trembling now? Do you feel it? Okay. What I want you to do is, because I don't want you to be afraid, I want you to feel comfortable. And I want you to go back, but the Spirit is not going to stop. He's going to continue to work in you, okay? And there's nothing to be afraid of. He's a gentleman, all right? All right, God bless you. What's your name? Ayana. Ayana, that's a beautiful name. Spelled with an A. Beautiful. All right, God bless you, sweetheart. Amen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, impact. Everybody say impact. You want prayer? All right. Impact is when you can release the power of God to impact someone's life. Whether healing, miracle, sign and wonder, maybe a word. Like God's going to use you. And you already know where you're going to be used. In the name of Jesus. Release her tongue. That she may speak in a heavenly language. Begin to worship the Lord like normal. Yeah, just open your mouth and begin to worship him. Don't worry about what you're going to say. And let your mind go. That's it. Talk to him. That's it. Talk to him. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Stir up the gift. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's it. Praise him. That's it. Praise him. Let it go. Oh, it's, it's coming. That's it. Wow. That's it. Let it out. Let it out. Wow. God, I thank you. I praise you in the name of Jesus. The gift of tongues. God Almighty. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes for your power. Yes for your way. Yes for your power. Yes for your... Woo! God, I thank you. Man, the power of God. Just worship him. Woo! It's impact. 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 We are a... Say it with me. We are a people of power. Turn to someone and say, you are a person of power. If you've got Jesus in you, man, everything you see me do, you can do. Everything you see me say, you can say. This is power of a people of the kingdom. Let's give God a great hand clap of praise while she's still out in the Holy Spirit. She's still. Stand to your feet. Let me bless you. I know we were a little long and I know they're at the picnic probably burning up in the sun waiting for y'all. 
But I wanted to do this to let you know that, first of all, God is real. He's real. And he can touch anybody, anywhere. Only believe. Only desire it. Lift your hands. Father, I thank you for your beloveds that are here today. They are your children. And so much you want to give to them. The gifts and your presence. Let them experience it all this week. And come back next week ready to experience another level. We need the Holy Spirit more than food or air or, or job or people. We need him for if we have him, he will give us all things. Give us more in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Love on somebody as you leave. I'll see you at the picnic and uh, enjoy your, your Holy Ghost filled day.